the weekly warp pipe. Hey guys, Russ Lyman, and welcome to the Weekly Warp Pipe, a podcast dedicated to retro video games, 80s and 90s toys, and all things nostalgia. This week we're diving in to the Warp Pipe and going back and taking a look at Nerf. It's Nerf or nothing. All the Nerf guns and also Super Soakers as well. These two items are great for summertime fun, and we discuss our memories and which ones we picked up in our childhood. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let's get into it. What's up, guys? I'm Russ Lyman. What's up, guys? I'm Jay, Ineas Addict. And welcome to the Weekly Warp Pipe. Yes. Welcome, one and all. One and all. (laughs) What's going on, Jay? How was your week? Uh, Week was kind of crazy. Had some personal stuff going on with my mom and being at the hospital. Um... But other than that, uh, last Saturday, I picked up a ton of video games to sell on whatnot. Oh, nice. Nice. So you're still going, going strong with the whatnot sales. I won't know. I won't say that I'm going strong, but I'm trying to fit in some sales when I have the time. Right. Trying to stay consistent. You try to do what, like one, one a week or one every two weeks. Yeah. I was supposed to have done it tonight, but it was, I was too busy. So we'll see if I can catch it later in the week. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I did one sale on my account and then I did it maybe two on David's account. So I just don't have time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bought 60 NES games and, uh, actually nice. probably, probably, probably more than that, but, um, yeah, so we'll see how it goes. Sweet. Yeah. I ended up going to, um, that convention I was talking about toying around the block in, um, New York showing off the car it was like an outdoor um let's say flea market i guess like a festival there was like tents lining the street and they had a bunch of artists vendors and stuff there weren't any um video games per se but there was a lot of like video game memorabilia and horror memorabilia so it was a good time i'm gonna have a video on the channel with that and me and dave checked out the toy store that was there and uh we're gonna check that out as well did you find anything good uh, yeah, I picked up a couple shirts, some hats, um, and some definitely retro toys. I did pick up two that kind of jogged my memory. Um, that I was like, nice. Oh. So maybe those will hit a future episode. We'll we'll save it for the videos. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, we'll get into this week's topic. Um, summertime hits hard. You get hot, and you want to cool down. So perhaps you could pick up a water gun. A super soaker, maybe. Maybe a super soaker. We're going to dive into super soakers and Nerf guns. Probably uh, mostly the 90s era, I'd say. Maybe maybe some 80s. I do have some facts pulled up. Um, And the first super soaker did come out in 1989, so it's a little on the edge there. Is it the classic yellow and green? It is the classic yellow and green. nice nice think, that's uh, that's clearly the remake isn't it this is the remake yeah they sell these at target i picked this up um last year and did a little video on it i actually mounted a little gopro mount right here and painted it green oh that's so <laughs> sick so i can uh get the video first person perspective there these uh that's they don't cool. work they don't work as good as the original i would say great Nothing for a does. display piece but uh don't hold up yeah <laughs> jeez jeez Russ, were you a big uh, Nerf fan back in the day? Yeah, I will. I would say I had a few Nerf devices. Um, I had a slingshot, which most yeah. kids didn't have, so I don't know yeah. why I got that. But the one I remember the most was the uh, the bow and arrow. Oh, you read my mind. That's the one I was thinking of too. Yeah, I'm trying to see epic com- epic commercial. Oh yeah. Oh, and a co- commercial yeah. for it. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it was so good. I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. I definitely recommend you guys go and check that out after this podcast because, uh, yeah, it was it made the Nerf bone arrow look so sick. Like, I don't know, you could just like shoot it. I don't know. It just it's, whatever it did, it, it epitomized like Nerf guns and 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 bow and arrows for some reason. Nice. Yeah, I, I have the uh, the timeline up here. It says in 1991, Hasbro buys Nerf. Tonka Corporation, including Kenner Products and Parker Brothers, is purchased by Hasbro Incorporate, and Nerf becomes a Hasbro brand. 
Nerf introduces its first bow and arrow. Yeah, was it blue? I, I feel like I remember it being blue. Do you see it? It's it's blue with hot pink, um, like on the edges where the string goes, and then you nice. got and it holds two arrows on on the top, and then you That's can right. put one in, and you pull it back, blast them, blast them, shoot Russ right in the heart with my Nerf bone arrow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. What other Nerf products there might have been? And the, and sadly, the only thing that comes to my mind is the bow and arrow. But I'm well, sure there had to be more uh, prior to that. Well, so 1989, I briefly remember this was the Nerf blast a ball. This baby was like a cannon, like a long tube, almost like a PVC pipe, and you would put balls into it, and it just had a handle that you would draw back and pop it out. Oh, almost like ping pong ball types, but but more foamy, maybe. Yeah, I'd almost give it a. Um, like something I would see in the um, American Gladiator. It's called uh, Nerf Blast the Ball. The Blast the Ball utilized ballistic balls and was pa- packaged with two blasters, encouraging fans to play together. Ballistic? <laughs> see, that's Is that a what you twister. said? Ballistic. Oh, balls. ballistic. <laughs> Ballistic balls. Yeah, I briefly <laughs> sounds... remember that. But I mean, them packing it with two, that's great because then you can play with a friend. Yeah. Oh, if it came two pack, that's awesome. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, trying to think any other ones. And I said the slingshot was kind of unique. It had um three, I think you could fit three balls in the tap top half of like the shaft, and you would uh, you know, pull back your whatever that is with the string and it'd shoot them out. Uh, not as practical as like a gun to fire it quickly, but it was cool. Something different. Oh yeah. I'm seeing the slingshot now has kind of like a, a taller portion. Yeah. Cause they had to find a way to put more ball, more ammunition in there or else you're just like you one shot and you're like, Oh great. Now I got to reload and run around. Yeah, exactly. Now that looks sick. I like that. Yeah, I'm trying to look. I'm trying to Google some more images because, like, my nerf my nerf knowledge is limited. Yeah, I, like I said, that that bow and arrow. I like to track down the bow and arrow. Um, if yeah, I the can. bow and arrow is sick. It's super sick. Um, some of the early stuff I don't really remember. It says in 1969, um, it's their first product, the world's first official indoor ball, and it's just the foam ball itself. You just using your hand, you throw it. You just throw the it. Most, the most <laughs> basic form of of uh, of combat, right? <laughs> Throwing things at each other. <laughs> now I feel like you could kind of use these interchangeable. Where maybe you didn't have a super soaker, so you use some you know Nerf guns in your battle if you guys were playing army back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm googling the only thing. I, oh, there's like a uh, pocket rocket missile blaster. Pocket rocket missile blaster. Where do they come up with these names? I I don't know. I wish I was in charge of that. <laughs> oh, you know what? I just saw something in my Google image search that struck an arrow. Do you yeah. remember the Nerf fencing, where it had like three targets or four targets, and you had to hit them? No, <laughs> it looked you like said, lightsabers. So you like set up your own targets and have at it. So well, so each each uh, Nerf sword had like a round piece, like to protect your hand. Right. And on that round piece, there were like three to four targets. So when you were fencing, if you stabbed the other person's target and flipped it from like one color to the other. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I forgot all about those. Thank (laughs) God for Google images. Google images. Nice. Well, maybe, maybe, you know, a little bit more about, we could bounce back and forth about uh, super soakers then. Um, I just remember super soakers with that classic yellow and green, you know, color scheme with like the, the orange tip and the orange trigger. Right. That was like the, the super soaker 50. And right. then they came out with like a 100 and the 100 had like blue, I guess. I feel like it had blue. Um, yeah. I'm trying to read the uh, description here. Super soaker 100 um, was the largest size weapon, the biggest super soaker until the release of the SS 200. It came with a, weight in a tank reserved double so it had two two tanks on it yeah uh, yeah and i'm a sick was accordingly known for its range and capacity it was the first super soaker to have separate pressure chambers 
so I'm about to I'm about to test your super soaker knowledge. Do you remember <laughs> the super soaker MDS? Because that M- was the one I had. Super soaker MDS. I don't think I yes. yeah, I knew the blue one, the green one, and then they had the super soaker 50, which is like almost like a handgun, and then the one with the backpack. So you're remember. gonna you're gonna have to look into this, but it, basically MDS, if I'm not mistaken, I know I got the first two words right, but it's multiple directional soaker or shooter, something like that. But the the handle on the front, you could rotate like 180 degrees. I see it now. Yeah, so you shoot around quarters and stuff. Yeah, so that's the one I had, and I just felt like it was like so freaking sweet, and it had a little bit of like. Um, it had like the big tank, but then it had like a small reserve tank on the back. Oh yeah. It's got like a little bubble tank on the back there and it's in like a neon yellow with blue and hot pink accents. Yeah. Yeah. It, it still kind of had a kind of a rad color scheme. And the other thing I remember was the handle it was really grippy. It had like a, a very interesting texture for like rectangles on it. Right. Right. This way when you're, when you're getting soaked and wet, uh, you don't lose yeah. your grip. <laughs> Multi-directional soaker. Yeah. Shoots up to 50 feet. Oh, man, when I got that thing, I thought I was big time. <laughs> He's like, I'm ready, now, get, ready to go for the kids here. I, re- I remember in the eighth grade. Okay, the eighth grade. Uh, or maybe it was seventh grade. They came out with many versions of these. Do you remember that? They were like, oh, like the keychains. Yeah. (laughs) And like, it was like the thing to do to bring those to school and like (laughs) shoot your friends in class. With like a a little sip of water, you fill it in. (laughs) Dude, I remember, I don't remember which one I had for the little one. I might have bought the MDS just because that's the same one I had as the big version. Right, right. But I remember that being so freaking dope, just like having this tiny little squirt gun. Like, I don't know what it was about. It, it was such a novel thing. We loved our keychains so much back then. I guess. I guess, I guess so. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be searching on, on eBay to see if I can find yeah, any I of these. I know this is going to like start a real problem for me. I can already tell. I, I don't see them very often at conventions, although... I believe last year at Southeast Game Exchange, I did see one of the Super Soakers still in the package at one of the booths. Yeah, th- I think those are pretty expensive now, right? Like, uh, I would imagine original, original Super Soaker in the box. I- I'm probably at least a hundred or or more. Hey, that's what I was thinking. That's right yeah. on the money. What I was thinking. And yeah, when I w- ended up going to uh, Target to pick up like this this replica one here. Um, it does say super soaker on it and you know, it has the color scheme. I think they were, they were like half price off. So I bought two of them. So I think they were like 15 bucks or something like that. Why do you think that they don't create, uh, the exact replica for that? What do you think the thinking is on that? Patent issues, maybe, maybe Maybe. someone still holds the patent to it. Like of that exact design. I don't know, that but like, it. like an individual person, maybe not Hasbro themselves or something like that. I wondered if maybe it was just to try to appeal to a younger market a- along with, you know, kind of getting us older kids. <laughs> I use the word kids lightly um, to, you know, repurchase it. So it looks a little more modern, like a modern version of what we had. So we still want it, but the kids maybe want it to. Right. So it plays on that nostalgia, but it also maybe draws in a, um, a new crowd, a new yeah. crowd to it. I don't know. I still, I still feel like when I saw them, I was like, "This is cool," but it wasn't. I'm such a purist that mm-hmm. I wanted the exact same thing. Oh, I see. You're saying when you saw the new ones in the store, you're like, "Nope, got to have the original." Yeah, I was like, "Yeah, a little too, little, you know, not quite, not quite the same." Right. Let's see. I dropped some knowledge in here on the Wikipedia. It does say the super soaker was invented in 1989 by engineer Lonnie Johnson. The prototype combined PVC pipe, acrylic glass, and an empty plastic soda bottle. Nice. Yeah. I believe I saw this was on one of those, like how it's made or whatever shows. And basically how oh, yeah. we put the, t- the tube into the soda bottle and was able to use the pressure. Cause he was trying to, 
it was i'm trying to think that i'm surprised it doesn't say it here i think he was trying to figure something else out oh yeah here we go okay he conceived the idea of a pressure water gun after shooting a powerful stream of water in his bathroom while performing experiments for a new type of refrigeration system several huh. months later he built a prototype in his basement um and used O-ring seals and a two-liter soda bottle for the ample reserve reservoir. Sure. Reservoir. But interesting. Yeah. It's a little f- fun fact there, and then, boom! Water guns for the kids. The more you know. So who was so we would play, um, you know, Super Soaker or Water Gun Battle um, in the neighborhood, and we would have um, the water hose, the sprinkler on. Cause you also got to fill these up. So are you, are you running in the house to fill it up? Cause once you That's go right. through your water, it's like, what do you got to do? So one kid's got to have the hose out on the yard so you can have a filling station. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mom, mom's not going to be happy if you keep running back and forth in the house. And then you're tracking water all in the house. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let me ask you this. Did your mom used to use this phrase in or out, make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I heard it. I'm sure I heard it. My mom always said that in or out, make a decision. You're letting all the air out. <laughs> Cause I, always, might... I guess I was a very undecisive kid. Oh yeah. Whether you want to stay out. It's funny. Like you bring that up where back then it's like, um, you know, we're always playing outside and, um, nowadays it's like kids are always just, uh, um, you know, pl- playing on their iPads or video games or inside and don't go outside as much. I would say. I know. I know. I, I think we had a good balance back in the day. You know, you played outside till you got too hot or t- it got too dark. And then you came in, you played video games, you know? Right. Play, great balance. Play, play super soaker. So the lights came on the street lights and then it's video game time or cartoons right. or whatever. Exactly. Watch some TGI Friday. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. So I looked up a, a super soaker on eBay and it was uh, boxed was like between 150 and 175. So a little more expensive than we, uh, we thought. Yeah. I mean, I would just get one loose. What about those keychains? those keychains on there? I saw one uh, for like eight bucks and I was like, yeah, that sounds more my speed. There we go. Yeah. That's not too bad. Yeah. I could swing. I could swing $8. Um, Man, I need. I want to find some more Nerf stuff, though. My Nerf knowledge is limited. It's Nerf or nothing. So, oh, you know what? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say they, you know, they uh, with the bow and arrow, you had the foam darts, uh, they're like the big darts. But then, um, and then what was it? That push one that we were talking about. Where is this guy here? The Nerf blaster ball was balls. So they switched to. Um, darts in 1992 the days of the dart began the nerf sharp shooter was the first nerf nerf dart blaster probably more aerodynamic to have like these small little darts going was it like blow darts like like that no no you know in the handgun you you pull it back and it it locks and then the oh yeah yeah it pushes the air in you know it's, it comes with three darts little handgun that is before they got crazy and put like electronics into it. And you get like a hundred darts and just rapid fire. Yeah. We have a, me and my son have, he has a, a, few, a little bit of a uh, Nerf guns. He has one called the Megalodon. It's like this big round barrel and you can just rapid fire it. <laughs> like something you'd see in like commando. Yeah. Pretty. Get to pretty the big. chopper. Got some pretty large uh, bullets on it too. So, what I was going to mention, what mm-hmm. Nerf always reminded me of as a kid was um, like footballs, like the, the one Nerf you see at the grocery store, right? Yeah, with like, and then it had like the aerodynamic spirals in it. You know, remember that? <laughs> that was so cool. Yeah, it would make they would make the set with. Uh, I don't know if they did it with the whistling sound. I, the aerodynamic holes, I think, were different from the whistling football too. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I remember my friend TJ had this ball in 1995. It was like a purple ball with like a, like a either neon yellow or neon green, like line around it, but it was full of water. They called it the Nerf liquidator. What? The water was supposed to help it get a rotation. Okay. I don't see that so on this were, side here. They do have they a ball. Pretty, yeah. 
they were pretty innovative with like different um, footballs designs. Right. I mean, I definitely tossed around a ton of Nerf footballs because they they were smaller than a regular football and they also um, were soft. So it was easier to yeah. catch or if you missed it or if it hit you in the face, then you were okay. Exactly. No problem. And they had like little basketballs that were multicolored. Like you would usually be like half one color, half the other. I feel like oh. I always saw those at grocery stores. Yeah. It's probably stop and shop for me. I guess Walmart. Right. Maybe even Walgreens. Walgreens has a small uh, toy section, Walgreens and CVS. Yeah. Those are definitely uh, those like small toy store aisle things like, oh, let me grab a Nerf football and a Tiger Electronic game. <laughs> yeah. It would be like something like if, especially like if you were like at the beach or something now and your parents were like shopping for the groceries for the week when you're staying at the hotel and you're like, oh, there's a Nerf football. You can play with the pool. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, there is another thing. It floats. Yeah, it floats. <laughs> it's freaking perfect. It's nerf or it's nothing. Yeah, we would get the ones that would whistle and we just have our friends like throw it straight up in the air. And you hear it like, yeah, go all the way up. <laughs> You're like, wow, that's so cool. I got to look that up. I want it because I can't remember what the mechanism looked like to make it whistle. I feel like it was like little holes or something. I think on the football itself, it had little holes and then it had like an extension tail on the uh, football too. So it almost looked like a missile. Oh yeah. I remember those. Okay. Gotcha. I'm pretty sure that's what it was, what it was going for. Yeah. Yeah. So probably even, even it up. We were playing with the sports equipment and then also the guns and stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't just want to blast each other. We wanted to play some sports <laughs> as well. Now I wonder how many kids did this. We, with the new one, we did our water gun fight at the beach, right? It makes sense. It's hot out. You're at the beach. Um, but we did fill up our nerf, uh, our super soaker guns with, uh, ocean water. Okay. <laughs> so I wonder yeah, I, if that damaged anyone's, uh, inside of their gun, but a eh, little, yeah, little sea salt, maybe a little, maybe a little more, you know, damaging than, than, well water or like tap water but right right you little seaweed in there <laughs> yeah probably not too bad nope <laughs> a little salty when he gets shot in the eye that's right in more ways than one surprised no one ever put i was just thinking like food food dye in it color that your would nerf. be cool so it'd be like slime yeah. yeah they could have almost like marketed that like you know like our disappearing ink like right. sporting that on the- I say slime was such a big thing in the nineties. Why wouldn't they have like uh, some type of slime gun or at least yeah. colored came with a uh, food coloring of green and color your water for your new slime super soaker 2000. Yeah. All right, Russ. So I looked up these whistling balls and yeah. one is exactly how you described it, but one of them just looks like a regular football. And it's called the Nerf Vintage Sonic Siren Whistling Screamer. That's um, the longest name ever. <laughs> that may just be the way the person titled it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm looking at a few images. They certainly had a ton. Jeez. There's the one. That's the one I had right there. Oh, man. $190 on eBay. It's maroon on one side, black on the other, and it has these orange inserts that make it whistle. What did, what did you type in? Well, I just put in, I think Nerf footballs, Nerf football. Yeah. into Google. And then I saw an image and it pulled it up on eBay. Gotcha. Okay. 1989 Nerf turbo screamer football, purple and black, extremely rare, extremely rare. You had the extremely rare version, Russ. Why did you, why did you get rid of it? How did they get rid of it? Look, it's got holes in it too. It's got chunks taken out of it. I wouldn't pay I remember, 190 for that. I remember a lot of Nerf footballs being like orange. Okay. Like almost like a it's like Nickelodeon bas- orange. It's like basketballs are orange. Why are you making these footballs orange? Oh, dude, here's a 1989 Nerf Turbo Screamer football orange and black. That's the one I had. Yeah. And it has like this weird device that makes it like whistle. Dude, Nerf footballs were so dope. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. Nerf. 
do you remember i feel like they had this thing with like um like a rocket and you could stomp on it and it would shoot up did they have that or am i making that up well i know those existed whether those were nerf or not i, I bet i bet that was probably a nerf product yeah you have like a hose to it and you just step on it and shoot the foam foam rocket up nerf yeah. foam foam rocket maybe how do you how are you supposed to hit anybody with that like <laughs> I'm deadly accurate with the rocket stumper. I guess it's more of uh, seeing it, seeing it go up in the into the sky. I mean, there's a lot of things coming up for na- nowadays, so I imagine it was back then as well. I'd have to filter it out with like '90s and '80s stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you ever paint any of your Nerf guns or Super Soaker guns? I wasn't DIY like you, Russ. I didn't ever think of that. That's what we did, definitely did back. And, you know, we're playing army man and you got these brightly colored guns. So sometimes I would just get a generic water gun. That's like see-through orange or whatever. And we would get the spray paint, paint it black and you're good to yeah. go. You're ready to go. Be an army guy. Nobody's, nobody's seeing that color. <laughs> uh, and in the dark. And then it definitely was a big issue. I know with um, cops thinking that you had a real gun instead of a toy yeah. gun. Yeah, that's why they made everything with an orange tip back in the day. Right, right. To be like, this is fake. Yep, don't worry, this is fake. I don't see many guns anymore. Um, like toy, toy guns? Stores. Yeah, I think with all the stuff in the world, I think they've uh, I think they've uh, limited what kids can play with. But back in like the 80s, man, we had all kind of crazy looking stuff. Oh, yeah. I remember those guns that um, would shoot sparks. <laughs> Yeah, and cap guns, I, yeah. And cap guns, cap guns, yeah, with the pops, pop, pop, yeah. The spark guns are weird, yeah. Cap guns are crazy, and this Google search is taking me on a weird ride. <laughs> You're away. going going down the warp pipe of Nerf and Super Soaker stuff. That's right, yeah. The warp pipe has definitely got me warped out of here. I'm, I need to bring come back to reality for a minute here. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say I probably use water balloons as well as my secondary uh, weapon there, but that's always yeah. it was always hard because you got to fill them each individually and try to yeah, carry yeah. them around. Got your grenades, right? You got to have all the the water uh, equivalent of regular war weapons. That's right. That's right. And then you got your super soaker, you know. And if you're rust, you're painted different colors to blend in. <laughs> Russ is like the only kid that had the advantage. Throw a strap on it so you can throw it around your 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 arm and hold another super soaker gun. All right, Russ, you need to uh, you need to do this on one of your channels, whatever your DIY is. I know. Well, you guys can definitely check out the other video. It's on, it's on Russ Lyman with the uh, super soaker. Uh, it's gotten some views. It's come back and stuff, but it's basically me and my wife um, battling each other at the beach. And our super so great. And I got the beach. I got the drone out. I had the drone wow. in the air. We each had a GoPro and the super soaker. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say the drone was in on it. You know, that was a little tough because I just had to fly the drone up, leave it there, like leave the remote. I hope it doesn't fly off and then go do the battle. Yeah, yeah, it was a, <laughs> it was an epic battle. I remember that video pretty vividly, honestly. I'll have to uh, cut it down. Maybe make a uh, a short out of it. There you go. There you go. Nerf shorts. <laughs> well you got me on the lookout for some nerf stuff now like i gotta go hit up ebay and see yeah. what, what i can find i will say at target they are definitely gearing towards the younger audience because a lot of the nerf guns are also Fortnite guns too uh yeah they got that cross like like uh, going on yeah like nerf guns and in the super soakers as well so it's like okay you like Fortnite? maybe this is a gun that was in it and you can enjoy it. So I That's imagine if, if we had like video game themed Nerf guns back then, like that'd be yeah. pretty sweet. Yeah. Give me a Contra gun, you know, a Batman or, a, bi- I guess. or buying a commando, buying a gun. commando. Oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> How would that work? I don't know. So I feel like, like that would just be one of those claw things. You would, you get stuff extends. on the top shelf. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't I, work like it does on the game. I need something on the top shelf. There we go. That's where I would be like extremely disappointed. <laughs> I can't fight Hitler with this. 
<laughs> blasted Hitler. <laughs> oh. All right, I think that wraps it up on our summer Nerf battle water gun <laughs> topic. Yeah, yeah. We jumped at the warp pipe and we took you to some weird places just now. Yeah, be sure to jump on eBay and uh, see what you can find. Or well, keep an eye out at, at thrift stores or uh, conventions. Wait a good week before you do it so I can get all the good deals first. True, true. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys enjoy listening to us, uh, we're here every Saturday at 7 a.m. You can listen here on YouTube or we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else you can listen to a podcast. Um, if you want to check me out on YouTube, it is Russ Lyman for all my DIY stuff, or you can check me out on bit by bit doing a um, whole bunch of shorts on there and game hunting conventions, stuff like that. And uh, if you want to check out Jay, where can we find you, Jay? Any aesthetic on YouTube, any aesthetic on TikTok, and uh, I'm now selling on whatnot. If you happen to be on there and uh, also Instagram. Nice. Yeah. All the fun. It platforms we're on. That's right. <laughs> trying my best that's it you're almost it. you're almost at uh you're on the road to 50k on uh tiktok I'm dude I, oh, I i was doing really well and then it took a slow slow uh turn so let's see if we can't crank it back up i got a video coming out thursday that I, i'm just praying goes viral so it's a unique one now have you seen any turnaround from growing on tiktok to youtube or no not yet <sighs> yeah nothing nothing major yet so you know it's a slow process. Yeah. I said, I'm, I'm still in a class that's 30 days that's supposed to help with growth and stuff. So it's, and it's about posting shorts. I've been doing two shorts a day on my YouTube for now, um, about a week and a half. So what have you we'll, seen from we'll that? See. Honestly, nothing <laughs> comments. People are commenting no growth yet. So I'm hoping it just gets eyes on the channel and then people want to subscribe. Um, but I'm trying to cross promote it. So whatever I make, it goes on TikTok, YouTube, you and go. Instagram shorts, not Instagram there shorts, Instagram reels. So confusing. I know. I know. We'll, we'll so see. Many, it's so many names for the same thing. It's all, it's all grind. So we're, we're keeping at it and we'll see how it goes, but we're glad the podcast is going well. People are enjoying it. And, um, you know, we got our weekly episodes, so come back and listen next week. Yeah, who knows what the warp t- pipe will take you to then? Exactly. All right, guys. Should as always, we'll figure it out the day before. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Yeah, le- leave us some suggestions of topics you want to hear. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> as always, guys. I'm Russ Lyman, and keep your world fun bit by bit. Have a great week, guys. Goodbye. <laughs>